a team meeting, probably last one, well, not long, maybe about five, ten minutes. And obviously, you put some team up, mm-hmm. the, the starting 11, and then obviously, because it's a chat, um, try to get motivated. Mm-hmm. And then, um, but yeah, and then we just start getting ready and everything. But, um, so, does it like get into your head? I actually want, to, I need you to give me a scoop. Does it like get into your head? Okay, you don't have to tell me all the details because I know that some are private. Yeah. But what is the one thing that Tony always says that sticks with you through the game that you that you hear at the back of your mind when you're on the pitch? Make it personal. Mm-hmm. I think that's it. Okay. And it all gets me going, do you know what I mean? Make it personal. Mm-hmm. If you make it personal, then <laughs> it's competition, do you know what I mean? Of course, you take it very seriously. Yeah, I take it very seriously, so mm-hmm. just make it personal and then... I just make it personal, I just become serious. Because now it's like in your space as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what does Tony tell you guys when you're goal down and it's half time? Uh, it, it, it's quite different depending on the situation of the game, you know what I mean? So, we could mm-hmm. be playing good and one nil down, we could be playing mm-hmm. bad and then obviously one nil down. If we're playing, if we're playing good and one nil down, it'll mm-hmm. obviously try and get us more fear and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, if we're playing bad and one nil down, mm-hmm. He'll um, obviously find solutions, you know, of how we can improve mm-hmm. and how we can obviously, um, what, what's going on, what's happening. Mm-hmm. And then I think that's why. So, do you think that Tony had um, an enormous effect on the defender that you've become today? Uh, or would you think that um, Anas would lie on the coach that you had in the academy? Because I read somewhere that that was also one of your very, one of your most esteemed coaches. I think I want to say the person that's helped me out a lot. Tony, obviously, like I said, is helping me out a lot. Of course. Like, when it comes to like um, character and stuff, and then mm-hmm. getting more weird. I think the person that's helped me out mm-hmm. as a player would be Damian Johnson. Mm-hmm. I think um, just actually Damian Johnson and um, David Lowe. Mm-hmm. Those are the two that I work with off the training and stuff to get to and trying to improve. So um, mm-hmm. I think those two, yeah. So those are the two, and then obviously the obviously, Yeah, Tony and everyone else. First, Tony. And so I read somewhere that Tony is actually very fond of you. I don't know if you're aware of this, are you? <laughs> well, he, he, he wrote a very um, interesting, very interesting piece about you. He said that you are extremely disciplined and um, a team player mm-hmm. and um, quite easy to get along with as well. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, uh, like, like I said, I just try and do, <laughs> I just try and do things properly. You know what I mean, I, I don't mm. train and I just try and... Obviously, every day improve and then try and do things properly. Mm. You know, it's, this is my life. You know what I mean? Of course. I try and turn into trading like it's not as early as I can, but obviously, mm. on time, give myself enough time to prepare for training. And it's, yeah, it's my everyday life, and I just try to do do things properly. All right, and then uh, Blackburn Rovers within the you know in the in the championship that you guys play for, and obviously in the FA Cup, you guys are one of the most esteemed clubs and one of the most. Well off, I would say, and with that comes a lot of pressure. Um, obviously, to perform and to perform at a particular level, yeah. has that pressure affected you in any way? And how did you deal with it? Uh, I don't think it's affected me in any way, to be fair. Or has it motivated you rather than affected you negatively? Yeah, I think it's more of a to be fair. Like um, mm. playing for a big team, do you know what I mean? And, and, of course. I think obviously, I think the fans, of course, play a big part. They don't put like. A, f- a big amount of pressure on you just because you know <clears throat> it's black marrow which I mean mm. the fans try and get you more of it as a youngster so I think they've, they've quite helped me a lot so um, yeah and I think that felt a lot of pressure do you put a do you put a lot of pressure on yourself do you think you put a lot of pressure on yourself I think so yeah I think so a little bit mm-hmm. you know I, try, I always try and be the best that I can be and I think mm-hmm. And I think without pressure, I don't think you can try and be. Well, you probably can be, but I think with pressure, I think it just, you know, pushes you forward a little bit more to try and improve and then get to where you need to be. Because you obviously know that there are people that expect a yeah. particular standard yeah, of yeah. you, and there are a lot of people that love you that obviously support you as yeah, well. Yeah. And you can't fail and them. Of and course. Like, obviously, you know, it's possible to fail, but you mm. you make it like a, um, a mission to try and. Mm-hmm show them that things are, things are possible in life and then you can make it. Right, and you know supporters can also be negative at times when yeah. you're not playing your best. And these would be called social media trolls. <laughs> Have you ever had an experience where you've been trolled or let's say where you've experienced a little bit of social media bullying 
when you've not had a, a good season, when you've not had a couple of good games? Uh, I think everyone's had. Mm. Yeah. I think I've. I can't remember when I was, I think it was last season, maybe against Wigan. I, had, I think I had a bad game. Mm. And then, <laughs> I was seeing a comment on my post and I looked at it and, I, you know, you used to stare, do you know what I mean? It's, mm. Mm. At the end of the day, like, people are allowed their own opinions. I mean, there's a there's a fine line between criticism and... Negativity. Yeah. Fine. So, when I see the criticism, mm -hmm. I don't I don't take it personally. Obviously, it's, it does mm -hmm. hurt you a little bit, but you need to just take it as a, as a, like, a motivation to improve. I don't think I see it as negative, but obviously there's... Mm -hmm. There will be other people that take it too far and it's just, um, but yeah. And then obviously mentally sometimes like when you see a lot of negativity and you see a lot of negative comments, has there ever been a time that you've been mentally affected by some of these comments on social media? I don't think so, no. I think I've done quite well with that to be fair. Mm. Like, uh, I also just think you're a mentally very strong person. Yeah, like I, like I said, I try not to take anything personal. Right. I try to like, use that as a motivation you know like you've heard people say oh mm. hey it's more hey it's more hey, me and blah 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 all that kind of stuff but right. i see it as constructive criticism to try and improve and you know maybe i could change to people's mind to say oh look he's he's improved his mm -hmm. you know what i mean so then that way they just automatically go away on their own yeah, because yeah. they see okay they were making yeah. the noise yeah. you've noted their concerns exactly put it on the pitch yeah and it's gone exactly and have you ever experienced racism within mm. your career? No, never. Not on social media, not on the pitch ever? Never. Do you think that social media companies are doing enough right now to combat racism, especially um, on social media? I don't think so, no. You don't? No, I think they could do more, to be fair. I've seen um, mm. something the other day about they deactivated some of the account for so in a period of time right. that they can't message someone. Mm -hmm. I think that's just not enough, to be fair. Like, they're gonna get it back and then they're gonna do it again. I mean, you're gonna, are you gonna deactivate it again for a certain amount of time, but then they just keep coming back and do stupid things. But um, what do you think they can do to to combat that? Honestly, I don't know. Like mm. in this in this day and time, like in this the life we're living right now, social media, is, I think it's just. You know, it's just the platform everyone uses. It. It's crazy. <laughs> it's it's hectic. Yeah, there's a lot of money involved. It's right. like, can you shut down social media? Like, you can't. Can you? Like, I just don't know. There's other night how you would work away around to be fair. It's quite difficult. Also, yeah. managing that many people. It's like yeah. the entire globe. That's too many. And um, do you think the football regulatories? Do you think they're doing enough to combat racism on the pitch and off the pitch? I think maybe on the pitch, yeah, I think probably not off the pitch, mm. probably could do better. Right. Yeah, like I get, like, like again, I, I don't know how they would do it, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean, it's difficult. So I'll hopefully one day, hopefully it can be sorted. Of course, hopefully they can actually find a way to combat it, to actually instill fear in people so that it just doesn't happen at all. Yeah. Yeah, rather than trying to find a solution yeah, after yeah, it happens. Yeah, bit by bit. And also with Blackburn Rovers, um, I know that they're a very supportive club. Um, are there structures within the club to help players who experience these kind of um, uh, incidents, whether it be racial abuse or social media abuse or abuse within games? Are there structures in the in the football club itself to help these kind of situations? Uh, not in the football club itself, I think. Mm. The PFA will do that, to be fair. If you have any problems, you know, if you're going through stuff and... Right. Abusive, or getting bullied, whatever it's called, whatever you, whatever it is. I think you just need to go to the PFA, mm -hmm. report, and I think they'll they should sort it out. Right. Yeah. Do you think uh, football clubs should have their own in-house support system for these kind of incidents, or do you think it should just remain external and let the the football regulatories deal with that? Um, I think you could do a bit of both. Yeah, I don't see why. Why, why, why you want to do it? So mm. I think I probably would help a lot, a lot, a lot more. But yeah, I don't, I don't see why not. Yeah, because that way the message can also go around to other players once yeah. they see what happens yeah, yeah, exactly. when these incidents also happen and the effect that they have on on players. People, yeah. yeah, because I think if it's being dealt with outside, I don't think people see the effects of 
all of these, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. occurrences. I think I probably would do a big help with that. <laughs> of course. And you've been mentally strong, you've been physically strong. I think strong is even an understatement. You're like a walking tank. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you keep fit and how do you keep your body going strong? Because I know you have little to minimum injuries. Um, obviously it's just the... Uh, like I said, taking things into your own hands sometimes in your career, obviously. Um, I think it comes down to the experience as well. Like, obviously, two years ago, uh, I, probably, I was probably getting niggles every now and then, injuries, hamstring, pulls and stuff. And then uh, I think I just, obviously, went and took things in my own hands. I started like, a physio outside of football, you know, get regular treatment and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, obviously, they helped me out mm-hmm. with my um, recovery and stuff. And then, um, yeah, I think it's just that, that's, that, that's the reason why. Yeah, because I also read that Tony said that he, he puts a little bit of more pressure on you because they expect you to do um, additional runs, etc. Um, besides all the training they're giving you as well. Is that is that how it works? Additional runs as in? Just for you to keep fit, for you to be extra fit. They, they uh, I hope from what I could understand from the interview that I read, it was uh, the kind of training they give you. Yeah. They uh, expect you to do an extra amount of running, also just to keep your momentum going. Or what? What kind of training do they give you? It's basically like a so just break, I'll break it down the week. So okay. Monday it's mm-hmm. Monday is a average training day, and then sun, not Sunday. So Tuesday there will be the big session where mm-hmm. we'll do the, the extra running mm-hmm. to keep fit, and then try and obviously keep top of the top of the, I don't know, if other fitness and then mm-hmm. Wednesday we're off and then Thursday will be average day again and then Friday will be a lot day, day before a game and then Saturday is game day. Mm-hmm. I think the big day will be the Tuesday day because that's when we do a lot of physical kind of like running and fitness kind of stuff to keep us, you know, keep us going. So do you do additional training? Are you like a gym person? Uh, not like weights, gym, more like <laughs> more like cardio. Yeah, mm-hmm. more like cardio gym. So you go you train almost every day of the week, probably three days a week, before before a soccer game. Probably yeah. four and then still go to the gym. No, I do I try and do some extra sessions outside of football. Mm. With like a football coach. But it's not like Oh, alright. It's not big, it's more like technical kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Mm. And obviously sometimes I can do, when I'm feeling up to it, like a, you know, a little wet back session for an hour, maybe just try and keep fit and keep going. So people think being a footballer is easy, it's not a walk in the park. No. Because <laughs> I think also that's the message that I'm trying to get out there because I think there's a misperception yeah. of what it actually takes to be a footballer and from hearing, you know, your story, there's a lot that happens is a lot that needs to happen on a daily basis that you need to bring yourself, you know, to keep a, a particular standard. Yeah, yeah, you just have to keep, um, like, keep on top of things. I mean, if you don't, it's, mm. you're gonna find it really difficult. I mean, um, mm. even in like, in this season, we get what is it, seven weeks off? It's not. I don't, I don't really see it as like the, as a time uh, off. As a time off, maybe. Yeah. How we get about two weeks out doing nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay, give you give you about the time to recover, mm-hmm. and then for the rest of the other weeks you working on basically you know. So you have two weeks to relax, and then like well, five weeks to train basically, and then back into work. Pretty much, yeah. Because even if like in those five weeks, it's not like you're you can do nothing literally. I mean, you can do. Mm-hmm. So it's your decision really, but you have to get ready for preseason. You know what I mean? Because it's around the corner. <laughs> And then by the time those five weeks is finished, you know, you have to, you have to go back to football. Mm. And it's fitness test on the, on the first day back. You guys have a fitness test on the yeah, first day back? fitness test. And then, oh, wow. you know, our pre-season goal is tough. It's running, not running every day, but it depends, you know. Mm. It's like running it's tough sessions. And then, obviously, the manager will look at that, mm-hmm. you know, judge you based off. Your fitness test. If you yeah. if you're ready to start the season or not. So it's, you know. And obviously, all of these things also obviously help you keep your body fit and so forth. Yeah. And help you keep your body healthy and your mind healthy. Yeah. Uh, but there are times where you know your body will just tell you that I need a break. Yeah, exactly. And um, I just recently 
you know, got a little bit of information and uh, saw that you suffered from a hamstring injury and a toe injury. What happened? Um, toe injury. When did I? I think I was not too sure when I when I previous game. Mm. I didn't feel like I got knocked, and then the next day I woke up and then my toe was just kind of sore, but you know, mm. it's, it's fine. I'm completely fine. Yeah. With a hamstring injury, it's it wasn't really. Um, I don't know. I never, I never pulled it. Mm -hmm. It was more like towards the end of the game. I forgot who was playing. I know I forgot who was playing as well. At the end of the game, mm -hmm. I got like really, really, really bad cramp, mm -hmm. and I was had to come off. Of course, yeah. But I never pulled it. I think I was I was out for long, maybe like two days, and then you see that's from two years ago. That's mm -hmm. an improvement, I think personally, because right. if if it was two years ago, I would have probably would have pulled and been out for like six weeks. So, but yeah. So all the extra training and all the additional support that you're getting has actually helped in yeah. make your body stronger and more resilient as well. Yeah, 100%. So are you 100% right now? Like or, fully fit. Yes, or are you still in the recovery process? No, no, I'm fine now. I'm really fine. Is it? So when is your next game? <laughs> well, I got my Saturday against Huddersfield. Is this how are you feeling about that game? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm up for it. Finally back, back, in, the, back in full swing. Yeah, yeah. Who has been the most difficult person to mark? In my what, like... In 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 uh, let's say in in last season, because then that will still be like a fresh. Probably. Who was the most difficult? Let's say striker to keep out of their zone. Probably Benarama. Say Benarama. He's at West Ham now. Mm -hmm. He's probably one of the best best players I've played against. Mm -hmm. He's he's good, very good. And who was one of the worst? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't, I'm actually putting you in a tight spot. Okay, or um, let me not ask you to mention their name or their team. You yeah. can just mention their position per se. Uh, I don't know. She... <sighs> and then you, but you have to tell me what happened. You don't have to mention the team, and you don't have to uh, mention their name. But you can tell me what position they played and what happened. Obviously, it was a left winger, but I, mm -hmm. it's like. Was a left winger. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's. It wasn't, like, but it was just not a nice experience for you during that game. Like, what, what, what do you mean? Like, was he good or was? He was good. He was giving. He was keeping you on your feet. Oh basically. yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was Ben Arab, and Like, he was really, really. He was a good player. And who was the easiest to mark? That's actually the question that I'm that I'm trying to get out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's. I don't think there's anyone that was easy to be fair. Mm -hmm. Like, there's all different kind of players. Uh, just... <laughs> you have to give me no. something. <laughs> I don't think I can think of anyone to be fair. I'm really? Like, so I'm... all the players have really been like that great? The, no, they've been not like exceptionally well to, to trouble me, but like they have been. Okay, let me let me rephrase the question. Have you had um, have you had to defend a player where your mind could go on a little bit of holiday and you would still keep them out of the box? I don't think so, no. No? No. Nah. You haven't had that experience? I don't think so, no. Not at all? Mm. Someone where you knew you were in control and there's just no way they can get around you, they can get past you, they couldn't score, clean sheet. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't think so, no. I think it's obviously... You've actually had a lot of clean sheets, eh? You've had a lot of... You and the tree at the back have yeah, had a few clean well, sheets, actually. Few, but, uh... You guys are actually quite good. Yeah, like I think it comes down to obviously the whole team, the whole back four when it comes to stuff like that. I was, mm -hmm. and like, it's not it's not like I do it on my own as well. But when it, when it comes down to one situation, one on one situations, yeah, I think that's not on me. But when it comes to like the whole as a defense of a team, I think it's mm -hmm. all, all of us. Who's your uh, favorite? Who's your favorite defender to play with at the back? Well, they're not favorite because that would be always putting you in a difficult <laughs> position. <laughs> but who 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 do you click with? The most of the back. Dara, Lennon. Mm. Yeah, well, I played with him quite a while, so we. Mm -hmm. I, I get him. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And if you had an emergency, who would you call that you know would come? That's part of your. That's part of your team. That you know that he's the most focused. <laughs> well, like if 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 Dara was not there, mm. uh, like I, I think I'd rely on any of my, my any of my teammates to be fair during yeah. the season. I think the mm -hmm. back to are quite good. Mm -hmm. Got two youngsters that have been come come through on loan. Um, I think they don't know, but um, the main man's there. And off the pitch, who would you call that would 
guarantee you a fun night out. That's part of the team. Yeah. Guarantee me a good. A good night out. That's really fun. Uh, probably Travis, the Travis. Really? Yeah. What makes him fun? He's just a character, and he's just funny. <laughs> just funny when you go out. He's he's, he's 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 just a funny guy, man. So he's like the the bubbly person in the, in the yeah. team. Yeah. Not 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 like when we're going out. Yeah. Mm. He's, he's very very bubbly. And who in the team would you say besides the the the, the team captain? Who would you say? is always serious whether you on the pitch whether you in the locker room whether you're at a leisure center or at a restaurant outside who is always serious who's serious who's a serious person i'll probably say oh, there was hope maybe <laughs> uh, or yeah, probably just Lewis Holby. So he's always serious? Not always serious, but you but know. But like the most... Most serious, yeah, he likes to do things. Between him and Tony, who's, who's more serious? Victor. <laughs> <laughs> so he's alright, he's yeah, alright. Yeah. Alright, so besides your football career in England, you've uh, had a bit of some time with the Namibian national team as well. Mm. And you've done amazing. Uh, I know that they, they, they were actually begging you to come home and and play <laughs> and I think the last time because of the the lockdown you couldn't play or oh, what happened actually the lockdown, I, wonder, I think there was a there was a calf game or so forth that they called you up for and then because of the COVID restrictions you couldn't go back oh, home oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah so it's a red zone country isn't it so yeah so I couldn't go I obviously had a discussion with the manager and then it's, 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 if I go out and I can do come back I have to quarantine for 10 days and miss I don't know, maybe I think about two games. Mm -hmm. So we came to the decision to obviously not for me not to go. Mm -hmm. leave, leave the team to do the job. So yeah. But how how is it like um what is the experience like playing for the Namibian team, the national team? Yeah, it's very different. Mm -hmm. Very different. It's, it's something I really enjoy and you know? gained a lot of experience from and then yeah, it's it's been a big part of my journey as well, like it brought me as a person and as a footballer. And how is the experience like for you when you go back home and play? Because you have got so many fans, <laughs> extreme fans. How is that experience for you when you get home? Is it a surreal moment? Yeah, like when I first played the home game at Samyama Stadium, it was mm. a really great experience. Like after the game, we won the game. Mm. And then it's just, you know, it's just really good atmosphere. And then, yeah, just good energy. It's hot.